Okay, so we're going to chit chat today a little bit about why I don't stand around my dogs while they're eating. And it's not to say I never do it, um, but it is to say when I do it, I do it with intention. Um, okay, so I know you guys have probably seen, you're going to have to forgive Dante if you're looking at that spot right there on his leg. He actually tried to play earlier today and rolled over into some poop, so I figured after he's done eating, we're just going to go ahead and give him a good bath, just so you know it does happen. So if you're seeing that random spot on his back leg there, yes, that is what it seems like. I don't know how good the resolution is on this camera right now, but anyway, um, why, I, why I don't mess around with my dogs while they eat. Um, is it a trust thing? Absolutely not. Um, if I need to take something from my dogs, it's not a matter of whether or not I think I can. I absolutely will. That is it. If there's something that is genuinely an issue in their food bowl, um, for starters, there's no reason why it should have been in there in the first place. But if for whatever reason I need to take away their food bowl, I absolutely can and will. That said, I don't play with it. It's not something that I go outside to see if I can do it today. No, it's not something like if you see a lot of these... Um, a lot of these, not to knock shelters, but to knock some of the practices that they have and not just them. Um, there's plenty of places, plenty of people I've seen do it, but the most common place that I see videos of it and seeing these videos get popular are shelters with their temperament tests. They'll put a food bowl down, they'll have the dog eating it, and then they'll put in a fake hand and they'll come in and reach for the food bowl. Um, here's the deal, okay? In no way is that an accurate or proper test, first off. And second off, not only is it not accurate or proper and entirely unfair, but it's also a good way to teach a dog to bite at the food bowl. And you probably have a lot of people that, you know, they make these videos about what they believe about this, that, or the other thing. That's fine, and this is something that I believe. It absolutely is. Um, but again, I'm not just coming to you as somebody who's had a few dogs. I'm coming to you as a dog trainer and behavior therapist as well. And I help people with this on a regular basis. Look, whenever you are dealing with a dominant dog at a food bowl or anything like that, and another dog comes in, you'll notice some very, very key things. And this is going to be every dog, every time, without exception, your dominant dog does not try to growl and hover over the food bowl. That's what a weak dog would do. They try to possess it. They haunch down over it. You, you'll see them do that. So when you see a dog do that, granted, you might think, I've seen dogs do that. Oh my goodness, that's definitely a thing that they do. What are you talking about? I don't, I don't mean that you never see a dog do that. I mean that what you'll see is you'll see that dominant dog, I mean, you'll see that dog try to be possessive. The dominant dog doesn't try to possess. The dominant dog doesn't have to try to possess. The dominant dog corrects. So a dominant dog in the same situation, instead of haunching down over the food bowl and growling over it, I don't care how dominant or how alpha you think your dog is, if you see them doing this, they are not dominant. They do not think themselves to be dominant, and you should not think them to be dominant either. You should think them to be what they are, insecure and possessive when it comes to it. Um, when you see a dog that stops their eating and then comes to that other dog, stops their eating, and goes to attack that other dog, growl at that other dog, goes to address the other dog. That's what a dominant dog would do. I'm not going to move my food bowl. I'm not going to try to hover over it and protect it from you. I'm not going to do any of that. No, you are the one with the problem. My food bowl doesn't have a problem. It's where it belongs. I'm eating what I'm eating. You are the one that is encroaching and you are the one that is going to get corrected. You know, so when it comes to it, um, that's what a dominant dog does. And secondly, the submissive or lower rung dog Again, unless they're trying to challenge the dominant dog, if they're trying to challenge the dominant dog, they don't touch the food either. They come in and they address the dog. So say, for instance, a dog that's not the dominant or the leader of the pack ends up with an uh, a item it's not supposed to have or an item that the uh, alpha dog believes to be their own. 
even in that situation when the challenge comes in, they don't come in and grab the toy, grab the food item. They don't come in and touch that. They come in and they light that other dog up like a Christmas tree. It is to the dog first every time. If it is not to the dog, then it is because the dog that is in question here is not an alpha or leader dog, period. That is all there is to it. Okay, so when it comes to the problem that I have, if you can kind of see where I'm going with this, the problem that I have when I see these these so-called temperament tests where you come in with a fake hand first off, a stick or something like that, and instead of actually addressing the dog to see what they would do to being addressed, you come in and project the energy and attitude, the uncertainty and testy nature of a submissive dog that's trying to steal something from them. You will create an aggressive, a food aggressive dog, period, every time. Or should I say rather, not every time, but most of the time. You don't have to have a food dominant dog in order to have a dog that reacts like that in that situation. You gave them the reason for it because you told them, hey, look, I I don't think I'm very high up in the pole. I certainly don't think I'm higher than you. I just want to come in and try to steal this food from you. I just want to come in and try to take it. And of course, the dog is absolutely going to flatly correct you unless you have a dog that is, for whatever reason, perceiving themselves to be less um less lesser than you on the food pole and, or the 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 pecking order and therefore they they don't try to challenge you they they let you either share at the bowl or they um give you the bowl and and walk away but again i want you to know that that the way that you're trying to communicate to the dog is not canine appropriate it is not dog appropriate so do I think it's a sign of trust for me, for me to feed my dogs and then stand over next to them, stand over them and play around their food bowl? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. No. Now, can it be in certain circumstances where I need to get something out of the bowl, need to address something, maybe put the wrong bowl down for the wrong dog, need to do something? I absolutely can do that. I'll tell them to stop. But you, you notice, again, I don't just reach down. I don't just reach down and grab the food bowl from them. That's not what I do. I address the dog first. I'm going to address the dog. I'm going to get them off of that bowl, away from that bowl. I'm going to have them step away and have a seat. And once they sit and they reach a calm, submissive state of mind, then I'm going to go get the bowl. And that is how I communicate with my dogs to let them know that I am the leader in that situation. But note, it's not something that I have to do every day. I'm not sitting around trying to prove it or even practice it necessarily. It just is. And much the same when we're here dealing with this and addressing these scenarios with these dogs, you're not going to see a whole lot of videos of me standing around when my dogs are eating. And that's because I don't want to communicate to them the wrong idea. I'm not standing around waiting for you to finish eating and then coming to get the food bowl. I'm not standing around waiting for you to do your thing and then coming to get the food bowl as if you were somehow the one who dictates when I can come and get that food bowl. And further, I'm not sneaking around waiting to try to stick a hand in a food bowl or anything like that as somebody you need to correct. I am not. You know, so when it comes to it, that's just a little pet peeve of mine, something that I see every once in a while, um, certainly with shelters and people that I've worked with at shelters to help to try to curtail some of the issues that they've had. And then they put a dog out as being food aggressive when in actuality it is either not food aggressive at all or it wasn't food aggressive until they came along with their test which actually taught the dog to be so so keeping that in mind whenever you're dealing with your dog at the food bowl keep it sweet keep it simple keep it matter of fact put the food bowl down when the dog has earned the right to eat let them eat move away leave them be as the alpha in a pack does not stand around while the other dogs are eating. He goes, once he's done eating and doing his thing, he goes off and does something else. He doesn't stand around and wait and pick up the bones that everybody left behind. So just just keep that in mind. Granted, this is just my opinion. It is something that has been supported through years of, of training and behavior therapy, not just with Tosas, but also with all kinds of dogs, uh, pit bulls, rots, um, all kinds of dogs that clients have had. Um, and it's something that has proven true. And I encourage you to consider it and, and think about it the next time you go to feed your dog. Thank you guys so very much. And I hope you're having a great day. 
Thank you guys so very much for checking out our channel, for watching our videos. I hope I wasn't too boring. Thank you for, for, uh, for following us or watching us. If you do not already follow us, please follow. If you have not liked this video, please like. Um, and uh, please subscribe and you'll be able to keep up with the next videos we put out about Tosas. Um, we love what we do here. There'll, there'll definitely be more videos. Um, and you can learn a bit more about the breed, learn a bit more about us, um, and, and uh, hopefully it'll be stuff that you'll find useful. Um, one other thing I might would say is that if you can, please share our information. Um, I know a lot of people will say share, 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 uh, but for us it's actually more important. You may not know this, but the Tosa is... Um, what we might consider an endangered species here in the US and even in the West. I would say the 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 place that the pit or excuse me, the place that the Tosa is right now is not unlike the place where the pit bull was in the mid 50s throughout the uh, throughout the 70s. In that um, they no longer are used for their original purpose here in the US. Thank God. They are not used for their original purpose. Um, so that kind of leaves a vacuum. The breed's notoriety is going down in that vacuum, but what that opens the door for is for bad actors to get a hold of what remaining specimens there are and use them for, um, we'll say, nefarious purposes. And when it comes to it, um, this is a wonderful breed. We just barely got the pit bull to where it's like 50-50 publicity, right? I'd hate for the Tosa to be the next dog everybody hates. So please share as much as you can. Get the information out there about the breed. It took so long for the pit bull to make a comeback, not because of breeding and responsible breeding practice. You no, know, there's always been people that have been breeding pit bulls responsibly. You know, um, what it took was having people in their corner advocates people who could stand up and say that's not way that's not the way pit bulls act in reality that's a dog that's been abused that's a dog that's been mistreated that's a dog that's been mistrained and that can happen to any breed you know and the more that those people get out there the more you see the pit bull coming out in a better light you know unfortunately it's still got a long way to go but that was the change and the same thing is true for the tosa we need people who are going to get out there and say, hey, look, that behavior right there, that's not a Tosa. This, this, that, the other thing, that's not Tosa behavior. This is an example of an unfortunate set of circumstances that befell an individual dog. It is not what is to be expected of the breed as a whole. Um, so when it comes to it, uh, I, I think it's super important that you share, 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 even more than liking and subscribing, which would be awesome, but share so that the information gets out there and more people learn the truth about the Tosa. All of it, not just the, the, the fighting past, but where they are today and, and where they're heading. Um, hopefully, uh, more people will see this, more people will, will share, and the information will be out there. Again, you don't necessarily have to want to get a Tosa yourself, but learn about the breed. Um, we need more advocates. Hopefully, uh, some people watching this will find that true and become an advocate for this wonderful, amazing breed. Thank you guys so much for your time. We'll um, let you let you go and, and enjoy your life and let Mr. Dante get on to his kibble for the day. <laughs> yeah.